A very good evening to all of my uh, folks out there. It is uh, Wednesdays and that means it's live coding Wednesdays. I've started earlier uh, an hour later than planned, um, but uh, rather later than never, I suppose. So let's get this show cracking. Yo, back again in my condo on the beach, I would say. Hopefully all the technical issues are sorted out by now. Um, yeah, so the past four episodes I've been focusing on getting a monolith to a, a cloud native serverless technologies. And uh, because of technical issues of the stream and stuff like that, it was a bit challenging to uh, get the things uh, out uh, and in the quality I wanted it to be. But hopefully we will get better uh, as we move on. So um, in, in terms of structure, I would like to get started off uh, showing what we have done last time. Uh, and then maybe continue with that. Um, on, on that trajectory to give some uh, idea of where we're moving towards. I don't want to focus too much on one specific topic uh, as we move on uh, because we need to get this thing done. Otherwise, it's like a endless bit of nothing. Um, but yeah, so let me quickly share my screen. Hopefully we have good audio which is important because that's all about communication uh, and also good visuals so um, all the people that are currently watching the stream please uh, let me know in the chat oh there we go other way in the chat there if uh, if you see something weird or if you have a question then uh, we can maybe get it answered all right so I've been working on the past episodes on uh, a job card program and one of the aspects of it is customer management of this job card program. So, and I've implemented two uh, endpoints uh, for creating a new customer and also obtaining that one customer just to sort of get a feel of uh, Azure Functions because that's the technologies that we are going to be using um, in, this, uh, in this case. So what you're seeing is two endpoints, uh, one for creating a new customer by posting customers. Um, and also very important is that you, we specify a tenant ID because uh, this application should be multi-tenant. So in this case, uh, I want to be creating a customer in the Awesome Inc. tenant ID. The next we specify the payload. Um, it's also very important to, uh, to point out that a person or that a customer rather can be a person, like a private person or a company. Uh, the difference being is that companies have more information related to a customer than a normal person would have. Um, and then there is a different thing we need to note is that the ID number is the business identifying number, like the business entity identifier. Let's just call it that, not the actual row ID um, in SQL terms or in um, technical terms. So that's separate from what this ID means. So when we run this, I've actually got it open in Visual Studio. If you want to uh, follow along, please do so. The code is um, let's actually open this up. The code is available on uh, on the GitHub on my GitHub page. You can just go to uh, github.com forward slash funny renders uh, forward slash job card dot v next. There will, you will see a very simple repo um, with all the assets. Uh, assets it's just all the screenshots um, that we've been uh, working from. That's the old legacy system. 
uh, and the source you will obviously see um, as we move on and, and create this new system. Uh, and also this HTTP folder is just all the requests I, um, I test with. So I already have the solution open. I'm just going to quickly uh, F5 the solution. Just as a quick recap. Hopefully, um, everything should go as planned this time. According to the stats, I see there are some viewers. Uh, if you don't mind, just uh, pinging me in the chat so that we know that uh, we are uh, in good quality. Because I'm actually doing it for you guys out there to learn together. All right, so our Azure function is uh, up and running and live. We have two endpoints. Let's create one, which is this one, and then uh, the get one. So if I send a request to this one, sometimes when I run this thing, it gets stuck. There we go. And uh, what's interesting is uh, I get a bad request because in the previous episode we've implemented uh, validation uh, on the actual endpoint. Um, I'm not quite happy with uh, how this gets rendered, member names. Uh, that's, uh, I suppose that's the property names of that specific property. Maybe we can leave it like that for now. It might be better to incorporate this in our errors. Maybe, maybe that's semantics. Maybe we incorporate it as a RFC 7807 or something. Like a problem detail um, model. Whereby we um, Oops, there we go. Return something like this. You know, type, title, detail, etc. As part of the payload. But uh, we can totally look at it uh, from an enhancement perspective. Okay, so what is wrong here? So it needs a few things, like account number and postal address, residential address, etc. So I'm just going to mock them. And I see also the email address uh, is not a valid email address. So to scout that out, let's just uh, dot com that. Um, and what else? The name is invalid. So okay, let's just call this name. Uh, test. Uh, account number. So that can be anything. Postal address. Now that's also very. Why do I write that? This can also be anything for now. Let's uh, copy the same for residential address and then uh, telephone and uh, that's it telephone one that's the minimum things that's it, that are required of course there's other fields uh, but just to satisfy this validation Telephone one, something so that's uh, this should work now if I send it in there. So now we have um, a created, which is fine, it was created in this location. I 
just uh, do that. I should be able to get the same ID back. Now notice that we have null values here. That's because our endpoint isn't properly implemented yet. It's only mapping the, the basic information. So this is what I was talking about. We've got the ID um, of the actual resource and we've got the customer ID. So the, maybe this is a bit confusing. Maybe we should call this customer ID instead of ID or make this underscore ID or something. The point is that we have two IDs and we need to dif differentiate what. So uh, this is a resource ID and the customer ID is, uh, I think we should change that to customer ID because it's actually a customer ID. Let's actually change that now. Just checking the stream out to do see if it's uh, everything fine. It looks good, right? All right. So this is the create customer. Also, noticed if you take a look at the source code, I've split the the functions up into separate files. Uh, this being the customer management module. Uh, and it contains entities and models in this case models being um, thanks Eric um, models being my DTOs for now and then each function will contain a uh, a, a great uh, like a CRUD methods or whatever functions will will create so in the create uh, customer a few things going on. We um, this is like the Azure Functions stuff with bindings. We get the, the tenant ID. We can just validate it when it still exists. Uh, very importantly, we actually need to update our company model. So first of all, the hierarchy is like this. We have a customer model, which is our customer DTO, and we have a company model, which is the extension of the customer model. So technically, it actually should be two separate things. Um, but for now, let's just inherit from each other um, to, uh, to see how it goes. Get some uh, duplicates, uh, duplicate chats in the um, in the chat. But that's that's something we'll fix later on. Okay. So taking a look at the customer entity. Uh, for now, we have type an ID and if we take a look at the, the Azure storage we're actually just storing this as a table data I open a table there should be customers there and uh, if we take a look at the data Only type an ID that I, uh, that I store other than the row key. So we can also extend that to be actually store more information. All right, so we I need to modify this as being the customer ID, I would say. Oh, there's already a custom ID, which is fine. We need to modify the new customer model. So this one is actually the one with the actual validation rules on it. So this DTO is being used to create a new customer resource. So call this customer. That's required. And, and we've got a few other things that's also uh, like email address and stuff like that. That is uh, included in this thing. Um, so what we could do is um, because technically this is this whole customer thing so what we could do is we can actually copy just taking a look at all the fields 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 fields. And if we take a look at, so just quickly jumping back to the assets. It should be, that's now the customer, the company one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's basically the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it's actually perfectly the same. So we we could, on the integer side, decide to do this because it's the same. I don't really really want to share on this level. I don't want to share. Um, my DTOs and my entities, I want to actually keep them separately for now, if that makes sense. But we could, well, we could leave this required things here for now, but I don't see the value in it. So if type ID, this can go, this can go. Because we already the API is already validating that things. Um, if we need it back, we'll just put it back. Otherwise, I don't think we will be needing it anytime soon again. All right, so we have a private customer's details. Now we need to actually add the company models as well to this mix. So for that, we'll just chuck everything in there, like, like so, for instance. Whenever we migrate this um, this code to uh, Cosmos DB, this part actually will refactor even more. So we have the whole entity right now. So now we can actually do interesting things um, with AutoMapper. So let's see what's going on here. So we create a new item. We read the re request body. Um, and we create a new customer model. And we quickly uh, see if we can validate that guy. And if it's valid, we continue. Um, Now this is interesting, it, it checks. This is also wrong, because here, this ID is customer ID. I'm actually gonna change that to customer ID. Uh, and this should be customer ID, like that I would say. This ID here can actually get out because we inherit from table entity, which already has a row key and a partition key, which is very important. We don't care about row IDs on this level. So what this is doing is actually, which we need to move later to a validator, is uh, it's basically checking for, you know, given a certain customer's business identity, like his uh, uh, identity number or the company's registration number for a specific tenant it should not exist for those combinations so if it does it just uh, returns a uh, customer already exists bad request so if all else is good then we can continue parting on a uh, on an entity Which in this case is these field or these fields. We're creating these things uh, type and then this is the custom ID and that should link to that. So this is actually where I want to include Auto Mapper to make things uh, a bit a bit better. 
for us. So how do we do that in... Uh, you might have noticed I will Google things as I, uh, as I move along because uh, it's sort of part of the thought process, right? So it's it gives us the opportunity to sort of also get some cool blog posts out there. So Oromapper. Hopefully uh, Jan de Vries will have some tips, but I don't think he is watching at this moment. Okay, let's see. Initializing Automapper, simplify projections. No, that's old. Don't doing that one. Mm, okay. You only need to call activate once. Mikhail, okay, so... you run it I see okay all is this question this is uh, quite a while ago 2017 let's see if there's more candidates one for DI and this is the one from uh, our friend Jan de Vries and this is the one I've actually want to be using a function logger appender which is uh, great using the appender this is um, not really what I want but uh, let's see using dependency there we go thank you Jan so what we'll do is uh, not be using meth, but um, So this is where you I know what this is. Why do you do this, Jan? Okay, so this is not a function, is it? I need some functions. Obviously, first need to uh, when you start thinking about using dependency injection, uh, it's constructor injection. In this case, you might want to rethink your mapping profile. Now, if you need uh, mapping, 
of course, if you need this, you want to consider the custom type converters or the custom value resolvers. Alright, so let's see. This is not really the one I want. This is not Azure Functions. Where did I see that now? Let's uh, do another Google. So we have this. Okay, so this is starting point. Let's let's uh, add this uh, this thing. It's a web job startup. So what do we need here? Okay, this has an extension, which is quite cool. we need to have a uh, job card startup thing so where do we put this uh, web jobs startup so we will do a normal startup class uh, let's just put one in the root that guy and a few other things okay these things on there so I need this add dependency injection uh, extension method so what is the new get package that this is in injection so if I'm not mistaken we can actually do dependency injection or package management inside here so let's uh, see how that works so that's uh, quite stable Bella zone that that's working perfectly fine all right so now we have that so now we need to actually add dependencies like uh, I want to add auto mapper yes 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 and then we can check these things in here which is fine a fairly new post All right so importantly we have a, uh, a map so this is how we do a map uh, for, okay for obviously first we need a uh, mapper just want to see if it includes a specific
very interesting. Um, Justin Yu wrote that uh, Automap did dependency injection. The code used here is an Azure function that calls secret keys from Azure Key Vault, um, etc. So he's got a little Automap profile. And then uh, his secret profile is res registered through a add automap extension method, which looks for his, uh, for an assembly. And he's got his own little extension here. It's actually. Maybe we should use this one instead. I have no idea. I'm a, in a bit of a... Maybe just follow one, uh, one blog post at a time and see where we end up at. I suppose. Because... Um, see, the thing is I also would like other dependencies. Um, this Azure Function Code for Dependency Injection Management. So it obviously has a module when it loads up. Similarly to um, this one, it has a similar concept, I suppose. After defining the IUC container like above, the function factory reaches all dependencies that get triggered within a function invokes the get services secrets function. So we'll we'll have a factory and how do we get the functions out of there? So I like it but it's a bit Because this mapper is injected, which is cool, but where do I use it in my function itself? sample code it's got mappers in there it's got all this stuff there's this modules this app module the registering all the services there I actually like the one that we have right now I think that's perfectly fine um, what we just need to add is um, the combination of uh, our maps. Like in this case. Then we have, well, we don't have auto map, do we? Did not install it there. Control dot, no, not using reflection. Control dot, what is the problem here? Add auto mapper. Why does that not want to work? Add. Maybe try that again. Well, auto mapper was added. There's a thing, okay, injecting. I'm a bad function level, so function factory. It's 
that's not really what I want, but fine. Um, but the thing is, how do you add this? Because auto mapper. needs to be added somehow. Let's go to the website and see how do we get started, blah blah, install it, docs. Let's go search. Let's see. So we have extensions, Microsoft dependency injection. That's the one I actually want to install. It's I forgot. Well, let's add that one. The Microsoft extensions one. Now that will allow us to add AutoMap to the services collection, I suppose. Go back to our startup class. And then we'll see at at there we go at auto mapper and doing that do you think it will actually just add <laughs> okay so now we need to create a uh, So now let's go ahead and uh, create a maps directory. Okay, now first let's create a map from a new customer to customer entity. So, okay, now I'll paste that little guy in there, remove the other stuff that's not needed. Do a quick, um, so that needs to inherit from profile. And we have now a customer profile. Right. And the way AutoMap works, we need to, in the constructor, define a create map. And this is uh, going to be a map for customer, new customer model. To a um, customer model. Actually a customer entity is that available no. so custom it so model to entity because model is actually the whole thing well technically not because type can be different Maybe we should uh, do the same thing here. We have a customer class, like a private customer, which is a custom entity and a company. One. So let's move these things maybe up, up the stack out. Customer. 
put that things there and inherit for my customer. And just to make it complete, we'll do a class um, person customer. That's what I've called it, right? So it's a person type, person custom entity, and uh, which doesn't really add anything to the deal. But uh, let's leave that empty for now. All right. <clears throat> so we have a customer, and we have a person and a company. Now we need to create maps for these kind of things. Uh, so we need to create a map and this new customer model should actually all check or also change. Let's call this specific because we're creating a specific customer. So a new person customer model. customer model um, actually let's put that back new customer model and we just do the same for click class The reason why I'm splitting it up into uh, separate classes is because um, the validation might be different. We can actually make this abstract to uh, play nicely to the rules. Because if we take a look at the company, Oops, company. It has these information that's also inquired, required rather. And uh, going back to the screens, the directors name and ID number is required in this case. But also note that the registration number <coughs> is different so we can actually play around with that as well. So we have a director name and ID number. is we might need to it's a good, good idea to uh, override this one so what we could do is we could say um, the custom ID being at a virtual oh, sorry override custom ID which is the normal one but then um, what we do is we say JSON property and we call this for instance um, ID number Person ID number, rather, I think that's much better. We'll do the same for the company, and we 
is a uh, company registration number. Okay, so there's all this build or not? Let's see. I've got absolutely no idea. It works. So let's go back to our mapping. We have a um, new person customer model and that maps to a person person customer entity and vice versa and we also have a new company customer model and that goes to the company company customer entity um, because the things are really the same automapper should work as expected Let me just see, customer model, customer ID. <clears throat> we might need to So there's no ID here, there's only an ID there, which is fine. We don't really want to reverse this going from entity to model because this is actually one way. So what actually happened when I just run this now? So <clears throat> there we go, it says customer field is required. not customer ID but I want to call this should be called person ID right Because technically, this is a set only. Let's actually remove this, it's not really. Let's do it very simple. Person. Person ID number. It's not all right. We go 
can say yeah uh, company registration number right so that should work and I should get a numerous errors which is fine which is I expect but the problem now is that it's actually looking at okay so what I can do is I can ignore that JSON from there I need one unified customer ID I need that This should go there, but still also set this one. Click Jason, ignore on this one. Also fine. This custom ID is supposed to be there. Um, what happens if I do this? It also creates it, right? But how does it know? Okay, so it needs to know what. To okay. All right. So now we. I know what the problem is because it cannot serialize. Here, so we know it's a new customer model, but we don't know at this point if it's a uh, person or a company. Look into my eyes. My heart beats like a drum. So what we could do is we can um, cast it. Me 
because of the type is a person Will that work though? That's uh, reassuring, we get internal server error. Maybe I'm too overcomplicating it, but uh, So maybe if we do this um, name handling thing on, I mean, chuck it in there, and we say. Uh, and then we go back to a person. Put the settings there. And 
now we should be able to serialize this. I hope at least. just get the ID alone and then uh, check the ID and then visualize it back again into appropriate types. All the customers has this information. I might as well just do that. But I wonder now if we say. Generics, how would it solve it? But let's not go into that rabbit hole. Where's my map? So, in this case, I want to go for a new customer model base. I'll check my type. If so, we'll um, customer and we say new customer is uh, serialize this please as take the settings out it's actually not needed I want to serialize this as a uh, person model so that should be fine the other one i want to serialize as a uh, company and then i pass my new customer in here so technically this should solve the problem of serialization it's just doing it twice but fine need the ID. Let's put that up there, the stack. 
something that should work. Okay, fine. New customer. say is it's awesome I have to get my uh, daily dose of sound effects out there please don't break it breaks could not create an instance of create or serialize an abstract class which makes sense because you can't really new it up but there must be a way of actually cleverly serializing serializing subclasses or complex types in this matter please don't break another error Instance provided must match object instance on validation context supplied. Now, what does that mean? It, it effectively means that I need to rethink the way I do things here. Because this validator now is a new customer model. Can I? Do that? No, I can't. Does this have overloads? To type. That's cool. I can. Well, I can only get it. That uh, sucks a bit. I could make this a dynamic, but then I lose my validation things all over. So what I would do is Okay, this goes up the stack Over here for instance or Let's put them here I would say we have an Input and then we do the validations assume everything is actually true. It's a lot of refactoring, I think. We can maybe um, look at creating a kind of an extension method for this. And 
technically we can delete this will I get the same pr problem now because I create a new type there I should not carry this, 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 this. so technically this should be better the bolts Input. and input seeing plenty of errors today Person, I get the, the person number, but if I take this now, so to company, I should get back company with more details that's invalid, which is the the stuff I'm actually looking at building, which is very cool, you know. Okay, so now let's add the stuff. So we can refactor a little bit later. Now we know we have inputs, it's valid or not. Let's focus on the automapper stuff. So here I check if the customer is uh, I use the same okay. Right, so now let's use automapper. And according to this Mr. Blog Post, I should be able to, where is it? Yeah. I should be able to inject, no, not this one. Veli, Vela. I should be able to inject. I need to add these, get okay, this I have. This is my startup. to have um, this in there. So let's see what happens. Let us see what happens. So now I can blindly at least um, like inject kind of a maneuver and I inject my mapper because what I want to do oh, there's uh, something going south here oh cool it has conflicts Hi, Kim. Good morning. It's actually uh, still night here, but uh, good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining. So now the thing is, if I... Remove that guy. See, it has validation contexts. Okay, I see. Can maybe do that. Oh, how you mate? Australia. Let's do that. Down under. That should be fine. Okay, so now let's finish this thing. So now we have that, and now what we want to do 
is not to do this but we want to be able to create it from a mapper so we want to be saying something like um, mapper dot map custom entity for instance and then give a give a source which is the input that's in essence what we want but the problem is that we can we can create this uh, but the problem is that we why is that interesting new custom base that's not really what we want We need to add a tenant ID. We need to have a way of figuring out how to add a tenant ID to that uh, item. And uh, I, th I think the the quickest way of doing it is not mapping it from this model explicitly, but maybe using a tuple and then string. Of course, we can probably use named tuples, but no idea. So let's see. Name tuples. Name tuples, pattern matching. Okay, I can do it like that. That's cool. Could I do this? This is valid. No, it's not valid. Say a uh, string right now. We have that mapping it from a tuple. So the only thing that we need to do is um, create a uh, new tuple. Uh, string and and this is the other thing we need to do to physically create that but uh, then we'll probably just do another if we could actually just split this up use the same logic but different functions you can play around with uh, ideas later Person. Then I say the tenant ID is in there. If I can actually make, I can make the tenant ID part of this customer. That's maybe an idea. That is maybe an idea. So meaning this custom here, you have a uh, tenant ID. And we could say something like from header. 
that's also totally fine. I wonder if that will work. X tenant ID. Will that? See if this that that disappears. So now that's interesting. So let's see if we can get around this. Okay. So da -da -da. what we do is here instead of that. I'm gonna put a breakpoint in there. Let me just see where. There. Great, so. Let's see. Internal server error. Cannot be invoked from as missing Azure Web Jobs SDK attributes. What does that mean? interesting it doesn't work according what I wanted to work maybe we should just quickly take this out because I've got a feeling that the automapper thing is oh yeah running locally is cool otherwise you have to end up deploying and stuff what I'm also using is this uh, local storage or the storage explorer with the local emulated storage which is quite cool as well. But I want to hit the breakpoint now and if this thing will quit breaking on me. Okay so now what we have here is input, serialize it back. We do not have a tenant ID because model binding does not work here right? be cool to actually put in model binding here so it actually will bind my tenant ID to to there but for now let's just set it manually if it's valid So now we also need to remember to map that to partition key. This way it gets interesting. For member. map 
from. again because it's a bit naughty now. There we go. I want that to map from my tenant ID. And for let's actually duplicate that line, control D. We say row ID. We can map this from good dot new good to string that should do the trick and actually for I wonder should take this off say new customer model to a customer entity so now that should do the trick right so if I go okay but first I need to get my mapper working How would I get this mapper thing working now? Because this thing runs, it adds. Oh, I'm missing something very important. I am missing something very important here. It's that uh, assembly thing. So I've been streaming about an hour and a half now, meaning I've been trying an hour and a half to get dependence injection and auto mapper working. Skip the tune now. Let's play some real music. Something went wrong. Cannot find parameter mapper. So it's supported binding type is supported binding if you are using extensions it's called cool registration method well that's annoying because um
kill some tabs here. Maybe it needs this. Um, I have no idea. Let's see if that works. Please work. Please work. Oh, darn it. <laughs> Cannot bind parameter mapper. Hmm. Interesting. Why is that happening? I can just use the study class for now at least just to move forward that's not even possible yeah okay so it has map yeah that is all the things I need so for now, let's uh, party on uh, not injecting uh, a mapper because it's something we can move towards because definitely dependency injection issue that we need to solve. Maybe it's a blog post that uh, I can solve uh, or do when I get this right. It looks like everything is binding correctly. Sending a request will trigger a breakpoint. Yep. It's valid. It's false. Okay, it's not valid. It's fine. Um, and what is the problem? Well, person ID number. And let's try this again. And this should be valid now. And it should not exist. Oh, it does. Done. Refresh. And let's try again. That should not exist now. Sending out tenant, and now this is where the fun starts. We've got this input, which is a new person customer, and we want a new customer, and it breaks. Automapper not initialized, call initialize with appropriate function. All right, so we need to call initialize. Automapper dot Initialize or something, mapper initialize. Hmm. Oh, I see, okay. This is a bit annoying because we need to. profile 
Right. Can I have this static? Okay, have that. Now it should work. Rejected. Why? Because okay. There we go. Looks like it uh, needs some time to recuperate. Five, ten, and it looks like we've got a new customer or with a Roki, which is a good and a partition key, which is awesome ink, and it's a person which is very cool. If we take a look at the data, just actually clear this and uh, open up new again. Uh, of course, I have not added the customer to the table that I've mapped yet. I can do that. Run it again. It's been created. The name, okay, so it's a bit weird. Let's just see if the data has been saved correctly. Okay, so now the data has been saved correctly. It looks like my person, ID number, name, account number, postal address, residential telephone, and email has been added wonderfully. Let's see if we can add a uh, a company. If I, if I do that, it will break because I need to include a company registration number and director one name. Let's call them John. already exists of course let's call this company one that will be created which is fine now we should have two right one a person and one a company and all of them are actually looking at a custom ID but the thing is to note is that we don't have any fields. That's quite annoying because where's my director? Of 
course I've added this now as a person things I'm using voice mod go grab it uh, it's actually a cool application to modify your voices on the fly doing wrong <laughs> no the attention was not to scare you sorry it's absolutely awesome <laughs> what do I need to do Kim any any suggestion because I'm adding a new custom entity which is in that case a company something may be wrong with the mappings to figure out is my um, mapping that's not really correct it's well it's mapping the right object the customer and uh, so the problem is I've got two entity types company and uh, person and it maps it correctly but when it saves it back into the actual uh, entity table this is not working because validation wise everything works fine I'm looking for John and ID number if I execute that already exists fine because that's true <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and you see the problem here is it's mapping it as a type. It's a new company customer model, mapping it to a customer entity. And the problem here, it ends up being a customer. Which is which is actually valid because because I need to do this again. Make it type safe. Actually, just validate the type as well. So we'll take that out. New customer. Entity. Oh. Customer entity is auto mapper, otherwise mapped to a uh, customer. Oh, yeah, it is. Let's see where's the mappings again. That goes there. Where's our customer entity? Okay. I want something like this, but the problem is company customer entity. So let's see if that works. When they it's all about um, trying the inevitable, I believe. While we're loading this up, um, we it's maybe a good thing to notice or to, to say that uh, you should we have a, a weekly touch it uh, webcast every Thursday. Um, Europe time, European time, CET, at 8 o'clock. It's in Dutch, but sometimes it's in English. Um, feel free to join us. It's an informal discussion of the news and events uh, around the world for all our techies. And then normally we'll have a demo or two, or an interesting guest or two. Um, and then do check out next week, Tuesday, is... Martin van Stam doing uh, office development live coding. So do check out his um, his channel. I'll throw everything now on the screen. Just want to quickly not lose my focus. So that's a person type or that's a company type. We should get a company thing there with our directors. Awesome, and that should hmm, okay. So, we, what we can do is okay, it fails now because it's not knowing what to do with these things. So, what I'll do is just actually take them out.
because if you are watching on Twitch, I wonder if um, this is Martin from Stam's uh, Twitter page. I go follow him um, and that's with double A, Martin from Stam. Or you can just go to um, Twitch. Twitch.com AAFVSTM. So it's AAFVSTM. That should take us to his, his channel. Um, so also check out uh, on YouTube and stuff. Um, also the same handle for his kind of things. Right, so let's see what is going wrong now. Going back to the coding. We always record our shows so you can always uh, watch it back. We don't have the luxury of doing it uh, timelines uh, based, but hey, maybe one day we'll get there. So now let's create one company that's been created. Fresh. That's our company. We have our director's name. John is there. And now let's go back to our other test and just create this one. That's also been created. All right. So now note that these are nullable because it's actually on a um, sort of a document store, technically. So this is what we want. All the fields um, actually. should be fine so if I reopen this now everything should be there again so we're moving towards a uh, more and more a um, an API that, uh, that does things and I think um, in the next episode what we'll do is we will um, see if we can um, do some more refactoring on this um, maybe just to recap I would like to have an injectable mapper. We'll maybe get uh, Yander Fries on the show to uh, co-code with me on this. Jan, I need you. Um, and then the next, this is fine for now, but it would be cool to also have it in here, I would say, as a binded, bindable way. Because I already have a binder. I must be able to get it bound as a as an item, but this is not so so bad. All right. So another thing we can also clean up is a uh, better way of instead of doing these three times, actually just do it once. Maybe look at uh, better JSON serialization. smaller new smarter serialization meaning that I don't want to do this I want to be based on the type I'm actually have in it the serializer needs to know does it need to follow this path or this path and then also call the validation on them Kind of also duplicate could uh, refactor this more into a function or something then here this uh, validation can also be done better
Lidt musik. Could uh, build this into a validatable object. And then uh, yeah, that happens. And then also a better way of uh, maybe doing. These kind of uh, mappings, because you know, comparing these kind of things, we should be able to do a, like a sort of a helper function. And of course, this should be in a move to repo. Right, so that's the few pointers I can say. So what, what we've done now is we've introduced auto mapper. That's uh, that's working. Um, I don't think we need this because this does not work. Somehow I need to find out why this does not work. Um, and then We have a few models. Well, this obviously does not work as well because it's the NBC thing. Let's just uh, remove all the solutions uh, headers or usings. Then I will check this in and then now uh, we can uh, move forward on this uh, absolutely great little bit project of mine called a job card. Amazing. So everything builds. So at some point we need to uh, start looking at some documentation. I had an auto mapper and tempted DI. Right. We're getting there. We are getting there. So the code should be um, plugged in. Just want to show uh, Martin that I'm actually using my lower third. He made me. Martin von Stam is uh, quite good at those kind of things. Um, yeah, so to. Uh, to recap, thank you very much guys for, for watching. Do follow me on Twitter at Farney Renders and uh, check out my YouTube account at Farney Renders as well and uh, also on Twitch and everywhere. And do give me some feedback if you uh, do want to see these kind of things again. Should we choose a different topic? Should we alternate? Or what should we do? Um, in that note, uh, it's officially morning in the Netherlands so good morning to all the viewers and have a good day further thank you for watching